that first sentence on the title card uh, was the first part of my definition, and just to add a little bit more nuance or depth, um, I would also say that the technology doesn't necessarily have to be uh, advanced, I mean, I guess at least from a historical perspective, um, like fire being used for smoke signals or telephones being used to make sales calls, um, you know, moving from door-to-door -door salespeople to telephones for call centers to, uh, you know, using computers and programs to have robots call you all the time when you don't want them to. Jessica Pressman, in her paper, she mentions the idea that there is a cultural shift in uh, perspective, some sort of like behavioral change that takes place. Um, and I think that's sort of the crux of it. And it's not necessarily a change in behavior, but maybe a change in the pursuit of that behavior. Um, People have always wanted to listen to music, and that has, you know, gone through strictly being able to hear people perform it, um, to being able to record it on wax cylinders and things like that, to vinyl records, and now uh, digital music. I was pretty interested in uh, Robinson and Crawford's paper and the idea that perhaps using the idea or the concept of generations isn't the most useful rubric, uh, despite its widespread use, uh, with regard to how people are interacting and engaging with these uh, new forms of media, whether it's like social media or just uh, different forms of communication, like WhatsApp, Snapchat, Instagram, and things like that. And then the more uh, interactive ones, I mean, all, all of those ones are, are pretty interactive, but um, in the public sphere, I guess, where you can just kind of interact with anybody like Facebook or Reddit. And just that, that that idea of when you were born having such a large impact. Um, and I think that it certainly does, but it leaves out a lot of detail. And what I think it mostly comes down to is, uh, I mean, things like what Dana Boyd talked about, um, people needing to find their own personal balance for their own situation, whatever that may be. Um, perhaps younger people are more inclined to be experimenting with all of this new technology um, and kind of figuring out what works for them, just like uh, young people do with everything, right? They're trying to figure out who they are and what they're all about and who they want to be. Um, and then perhaps when they get a little bit older, they fall into a groove. Maybe they're, uh, you know, they've entered the professional world. Um, so maybe they, you know, pull back a little bit and stop posting hyper-personal things on, on Facebook. And, um, but, it, but it really just comes down to uh, what your situation calls for, what you personally find appropriate, what you find uh, useful in terms of how you engage with these things, um, or if some of them are even necessary for you to... Uh, to, to make it through whatever situation you find in your life. Is it necessary for you to use email for work? Is it necessary for you to use WhatsApp or Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat? Maybe necessary is too strong of a word because um, certainly we've, we've gotten on relatively well uh, before these things were, were around, but it's, it, it makes everything much quicker, easier. Clive Thompson talks about in his paper, um, there can often be some panics about how people are going to engage with these new forms of media and what that's going to look like. I spoke with uh, three women. I just, I wanted to get a vibe of how these people from very similar age groups, they're all between 24 and 25, um, how they interact differently or similarly. Um, I didn't, I was not necessarily concerned with them answering the question of whether or not uh, generation, the idea of a generation is a uh, worthwhile or useful uh, sort of metric. Um, I was more interested in just asking them about their interaction and engagement with some of these 
platforms um, like Facebook and Snapchat, Instagram, WhatsApp, things like that. Um, in order to communicate with people uh, that I work with, I use Slack or Basecamp. Um, I also use the group chat group me as well as Facebook Messenger. I use both WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger. Um, I use um, I do a I do a lot of lurking and a lot of scrolling through Instagram and Twitter and Facebook um, and not a whole lot of posting Reddit also. Um, every now and then I'll post on Reddit, but mostly I just use it to waste time. <laughs> I use Facebook, Facebook Messenger, Instagram, WhatsApp. I think that's it. Oh, and email. I used to use Snapchat. The app that I use the most is probably Facebook Messenger. It gives me access to the most people that I don't have the ability to communicate with through uh, texting or through phone calls. Probably Facebook, regrettably. <laughs> I've been thinking of deleting it um, just because I'll find myself like with whatever spare idle moment I have, just like whip out my phone and scroll through Facebook for no reason at all. So, <laughs> yeah. Just regular texting. Okay. App, then I probably use Instagram the most app wise. Yeah. Just for like posting things or for communication? Communication. Usually the app that I use to communicate will depend on um, what app is being used by the person I want to communicate with rather than what I prefer. I like texting. Like there are a couple of people, uh, a couple of friends that I have for, that, who for whatever reason I don't have their number, you know. I don't know why that is, <laughs> but um, uh, you know, like people I, I had met in the past couple years who I talked to pretty frequently, but, uh, because we started talking on Facebook messenger and don't have any reason to call each other. There's no reason to, you know, exchange contact information be beyond that. So, yeah. Um, I don't think I would have trouble if I were unable to use any of my apps anymore, with the exception of phone calls and text messaging built into the phone service. If I didn't have the ability to send text messages, that would um, negatively impact my life in a big way, but third-party apps, um, no such feelings on those. I wouldn't mind if those were gone. No. No? No. I mean, I use them a lot, like, but I can go a long time without using any of them. Like, I was off of Facebook and Messenger for like six months. Um, and it didn't like really affect my life too much. I just went back on because I have some people who are out of the country and it's expensive to text. Uh, I don't personally have this feature, but there is a feature on many people's phones where you can see when a person has read your message. And um, I, would imagine there's some etiquette in that on when it's appropriate to leave a message read or unread. Um, but as I said, I don't have that feature, so I'm not aware of any particular rules with that. Sometimes when I'm using Facebook Messenger, I will not look at a message for a long time because that is one of those uh, apps in which the other person can see when you've read something. So it's not my primary mode of communication. And I think that's one of those reasons, is because I'm not comfortable with people knowing if I've seen or not seen their messages. Um, yeah, as I said, I will deliberately not look at a message so the person doesn't know that I saw it or haven't responded yet. Um, I'm probably like four years too old to be really deeply ingrained in those rules. Uh -huh. So this would probably be better question for someone younger who like really lives in this world and is social media popular um but there are like I guess there's certain things like if uh if one of my closest friends posts something I always like it even if I don't actually like the content it's just like oh this is emotional support 
if you're like looking at someone's profile and you like something from too long ago, then you're considered a stalker. And that's a big faux pas. So like, oh, wow, you were 68 weeks deep into my profile. That's a, that's kind of an unwritten rule you shouldn't break. It is different as a woman because like, you're judged so differently. Like, you, you know, a guy can post something and then it's like, oh, look at him in a swimsuit. And then a girl posts something and it's like, is that too revealing? Is it not revealing enough? Is it and like, it's just analyzed in a different way. And then you get, you know, hundreds of people. I don't personally, but people who are more popular get hundreds of creepy comments and like inappropriate messages. And I mean, I've gotten a couple of those and I'm not even in any way social media relevant. It's easier being a little bit farther out of that generation, I think. I think that there that there are some things um, linguistically, lingu like linguistic uh, sort of code shifting I'll follow in uh, a lot of online communication, like um, a judicious deployment of periods. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you don't want to make something sound too severe, even if it's grammatically correct to do so so I, you know i'll do stuff like that but you know it's not weird we're yeah. in our mid-20s <laughs> I'm not like already talking about how how the youngins do it all differently <laughs> like we're i feel like we're older and so there's a lot more people my age who don't use social media than like five years below us and we use it differently than we used to. Like when I first got on, it was, hello world, let me share all my thoughts with you. And I had no filter and it was just about like me and my friends communicating. And now it's a lot more about how you like present yourself. And I like have to think, if my employer sees this, is that a bad thing? If like, is there any way this could get taken out of context? Is there any way that someone could look at this and be offended? Which is all just stuff that like, I never really considered at all when I was in high school, just messing around on the internet. And it was a much smaller thing. And it was just like, let me share everything I've ever thought publicly. So that's different. I'm worried about the future of what social media might be like. I think it's only increased recently and in the pressure, the number of outlets, the expectations on people. I can imagine a future, you know, for our children where uh, you know, for tomorrow's children where things are so much more involved and more intense and the expectations are just such that everyone will have this carefully cultivated social media presence that might actually detract from just living your life, uh, which is something I really value. Uh, being able to just live my life and not worry about what it looks like on social media. So there we have three different perspectives, uh, three, not super different, but you know, there's some, some uh, different levels of interaction there. I'd say Lane being on the, the higher tier there and, and Alex being sort of on the bottom and Mariana being somewhere in the middle. Um, but you know, using uh, technology or something to push communication. Um, beyond some, some, some limitation. Uh, you know, Lane can use WhatsApp to communicate with people where it would be uh, not cost-effective otherwise or um, much more difficult. Uh, Alex can be more plugged in at work through um, email. It's a little bit older, but also things like uh, using Slack to stay plugged in. We talked about that shift in behavior or perspective from a previous cultural norm. Um, you know, whether that's something broad and lasting and useful, like um, having email or Slack to communicate or to, um, you know, use Facebook to stay in communication with uh, friends at a distance, um, or even just uh, changes that maybe don't last as long. And I, I suppose what I mean by that is, like Lane, for instance, mentioned um, when she was younger using Facebook as basically a journal and sort of oversharing uh, everything that was going on with her, regardless of, of maybe if it was appropriate or not, and then sort of fine-tuning that as she got older. I did think it was pretty interesting uh, at the end there when we were talking about 
uh, the generation, the generational aspect, and um, it seems hard to get away from. It 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 is a admittedly very easy concept to wrap one's mind around. I think that the concept of a generation is a very like kind of quick and dirty way to be able to talk about some of this stuff. Um, and while it lacks certain amounts of nuance, it does seem to come up uh, quite easily. And a lot of the same, uh, you know, fears and ideas about uh, younger people. You know, Sherry Turkle in her article mentions going to schools and talking to the faculty and the deans and how they perceive the uh, younger people behaving differently and interacting differently uh, with the advent of all of this new technology. Where it seems to sort of lose its weight, though, the concept of generation, is that it doesn't seem to matter really what the generation is. I think it's more just <laughs> here's some young people and then here are some older people. And Alex Alex touched on this with her uh, you know worries for the future and if she has children, what that's going to look like in terms of their engagement and um, you know Mariano was joking about, not being really that old, but already talking about, you know, how the young people are doing it all differently. And uh, Lane mentions uh, differences in interaction between um, younger people and people who are maybe a little bit older. Some of the articles that we've read where they uh, talk about the cycle, you know, we went through something, a sort of panic with the telephone, and we've gone through panics about the phonograph or about kaleidoscopes and things like that and it's just this cycle so it kind of doesn't seem super connected necessarily to specific generations it seems to be just sort of taking steps the young people grow up have children or are going to have children some people and they start to worry about their children and their place in the world and um, it and and you know this satirical article uh, about fire and the, the 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 needing to find a balance between fire time and family time and um, it 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 just it seems to have less to do with this specific generation being this way and this specific generation being another way instead of specific generation maybe mattering so much it's just a sort of a weird ladder system. Um, where right now it's it's like the um, millennials are now adults and we can look at the uh, young people to us, Gen Z, and then when we get up a little bit farther, we have the you know boomers as the adult figures and then we have the millennials as the younger people. And it just sort of seems to, to move on in that fashion. Just whoever's right next to each other, that's where the, the sort of conflict seems to be um, in terms of, you know, fears or, or what's going on with, uh, with new media. So instead of just uh, ending abruptly, um, we are on the internet after all, and I think, you know, one of the oldest traditions is uh, showing pictures of uh, cute animals. So how about we end with, with some, some cute dog pics? She's a dog, she's a dog, she's a doggy dog, 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 she's a dog, she's a cute little dog, 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 running around being a dog, 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 what a cute dog, dog, ga, 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 dog, doggy dog, dog, cute little dog, 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 dog.